Hello there and welcome to my channel on chemistry lessons. At the moment we do predominantly focus on A-level chemistry lessons and they are full, designed to be full lesson videos. So please make sure you subscribe and you like to make sure you don't miss out on future videos. I do aim eventually to cover the full A-level specification. If you think there are any, any gaps, please let me know and I'll ensure that I fill them for you. So hopefully you find it useful and good luck. So this video is a time of flight mass spectroscopy video and it's a first in a series of three. So this video is going to focus on the main stages of the mass spectrometer. And then after that, we'll start to look at the calculations, um, which students tend to find fairly difficult. So mass spectrometry, then it's, a, it's an analytical technique and there's two main reasons we would use it. And they're both both based around finding the mass. So if we were to put an element in a mass spectrometer, we'd be looking to identify the relative atomic mass based upon the abundance of the isotopes that are present. Or if we were to put a bigger molecule in there, we'd be looking at determining the molecular mass of that substance. If you're using molecules, you do also get fragmentation, which is something that we'll discuss later on. So this is what one would look like then. I suppose it, it's very similar in size, this to, a, to something like a photocopier. Not that you need to be able to recognize what they look like, but it just kind of puts, puts some context to the topic. And I just did a quick search on Google and there we found a, a mass spectrometer for sale there. Fairly pricey, as you can see. So you tend not to have them in colleges, but you'll definitely find them at universities. So the aims of this video today then are to know and describe the main stages of the mass spectrometer and in particular making sure that we know the different types of ionization. This does or has caught people out in the past with the exams because for the AQA exam board you definitely need to know the detail of each stage. In other A-level specifications you don't. So moving on from this then we're going to be looking at calculations from the next lesson and in further lessons we will talk about that fragmentation and molecular ion peaks. So there are four main stages in the mass spectrometer and we need to know a little bit of information about each of the four stages. It is worth pointing out at this point though that when the sample is injected now usually the sample is dissolved in a solution um, or it's a liquid but it's heated until it's vaporized. So it needs to be vaporized before anything else happens. OK, so the sample is vaporized at the beginning and then these four stages occur in this order. So ionization followed by acceleration, then drift or flight. Sometimes it's called flight instead of drift. And then we have the detection at the end. So let's look through each of these four stages. And so the first stage is ionization, which is making the ions positive. So making positively charged ions from the sample. So we need to make the sample positively charged. And there's two ways we can do that. Just think logically about what you know about atoms. How can you make something positively charged? The first thing we can do is knock an electron off. And this is called electron impact and we do need to know the details of what this is. So this is where high energy electrons are fired from an electron gun and the electron gun is a hot wire filament with a current passing through it. And you do need to know that information for AQA. And what happens is, is electrons are fired at the sample and it knocks other electrons off. This is seen as the most aggressive way of ionizing and actually is highly likely to cause fragmentation if we're discussing or if we're using molecules as the sample. And again, you saw that we'll be looking at that in a couple of lessons time. The second way that we could make something positive is to add a proton to it. That kind of makes sense. Protons are positively charged and this is called electrospray. So the sample is dissolved in a volatile solvent and it's injected through a fine hypodermic needle. And the tip of the needle is attached to a positive terminal and that causes the sample to gain a proton. And the symbol for a proton in chemistry is H+. H+, that is just a proton. And that gives the sample a plus one charge. So let's have a look at what an equation might look like for each of them then. 
So I'm just going to use a general X for my sample. So in the first one, I've got X. Now, we can just show it as X becoming X plus plus an electron. You've knocked an electron off. But in some cases, people like to show it as having an electron at the start and two electrons at the end. So that kind of is showing that you're firing an electron. Both equations are accepted. Both are correct. OK, so we have our sample X. It becomes X plus and it's lost an electron. Or to visualize it, you could put an electron at the start and two electrons at the end because you do require to fire an electron at the sample. But as I've said, both equations are correct. And with the electro spray, we have the sample X. And this time we're adding a H plus. So it literally becomes X H plus. But the key point is we're forming positive sample. We are making the sample positively charged. We're making it either lose an electron or gain a proton to become positively charged. Just be careful with the electro spray because a proton does have a mass of one. And because the whole point in mass spectroscopy is to find the mass, the mass that you find will actually be one heavier than the actual mass because it's gained a proton. In terms of electron impact, if you lose an electron, that loss in mass is negligible. So the mass of X plus is the same as the mass of X when it comes to the atomic mass or the molecular mass. The second stage then, once ionization has taken place, is to accelerate the ions. We speed them up and that's done using a negatively charged plate. So these positive ions are attracted towards a negatively charged plate and they are accelerated. Now, they are not accelerated to the same speed. They are accelerated to the same kinetic energy. And this is the important part. This, that's, this is how the whole basis of how time of flight works. OK, because if you give two particles the same kinetic energy, but they have a different mass, they will actually have different speeds. The lighter particle will have a higher velocity. And just to kind of use the kinetic energy equation that you hopefully are familiar with from GCSE, but kinetic energy is half times m times v squared. So you can see if they have the same kinetic energy, but a smaller mass, it must have a higher velocity. Just like if it has a higher mass, it will have a smaller velocity because they have the same kinetic energy. And then the third stage is flight or drift. Now, depending upon their mass, I've already covered this, so heavier particles will travel slower and lighter particles travel faster. So they will reach the detector at different times. OK, they will reach the detector at different times. So once they hit the detector, then what happens? So they hit the detector gaining electrons. Remember, these particles are positively charged. So once they hit the detector, so if it was electron impact, they will hit the detector and become neutral again. If it was electro spray, it would be XH plus, but still gaining electron to become XH. So they gain electrons and that gain of electrons is a movement of electrons. Those electrons move from the plate to the sample. That is a movement of electrons. It is a current and that current can be measured. The more particles hit the plate at that any given time is a bigger movement of electrons, therefore is a bigger current. So the size of the current is directly linked to the abundance of that particle. So the more abundant that isotope is, the bigger the current, because there's more electrons will move at that given time. And as we can see, there's a, our first glimpse of what a spectra looks, looks like. And this sample here, this was a sample. It contained two different particles. One has the mass overcharge of 11, and it was the most abundant. It was the biggest current. And the other particle has a mass overcharge of 10. So if this was an element, we can see that this contains two isotopes. And the isotope 11 has the biggest abundance. Now, if this was electron spray, I'd have to be conscious to take off the one. So it would actually be 9 and 10, not 10 and 11. 
if it's electron impact, it is 10 and 11. And we're going to look at calculations in the next video. So that's it for the four main stages. Remember, for AQA, you must know the detail for each of those four stages. So hopefully you found that useful and it cleared up any um, difficulties you're having. Please look out for the next video where we will look at uh, the difficult calculations. And again, in a third video where we'll start to look at fragmentation and molecular ions.